You're watching a Hollywood movie. It's a scene in an open area. It feels very natural, very calming, and you hear the sound. And then it gets darker, somewhat eerie. Then you hear this sound. All of those sounds are loons call. Those who live in the Northern Hemisphere might be familiar with these birds. I mean, it's even the provincial bird of Ontario. And it's why the Canadian $1 coin is called Looney, because it has a loon on one of its sides. But what many people might not know is, loon is not ducks, nor goose, nor any other birds. Loons are more unique than you might think. So, let me brought up the question. What exactly is loon? While loons might look similar to duck or goose, loons are not closely related to them. Loon is its own order of birds, the Gaviiformes. There is only one extant genus in this order, which is the Gavia, in the Gaviidae family, so it's pretty easy to remember. Gavia is actually a Latin term for seabirds in general, but as most of you might have already known, loons are mostly lake dwellers but they are still somewhat related to seabirds, at least based on one of the recent phylogenetic analyses. There are five species of loons, and I'm gonna talk about each of them throughout this video. In general, they can be found in the northern hemispheres, both North America and Europe. Their overall appearance looks a little bit similar to the dog order, but the loons have sharp spear-like bill, while the dogs have white and flattened bill. Some people say they look like cormorants, but I personally can't see it. Cormorants have hooked beak and slender snake-like neck. When swimming, cormorants' body is mostly submerged. Dog's body is mostly above water, while the loons are, let's say, in the middle. The more apparent difference is the legs. Loons' legs are located towards their rear. In this aspect, they are similar to the greaves, but greaves have lobata feet while loons have palmata feet, just like many seabirds. Their body is relatively bulky, which makes their wings look relatively short. When flying, they keep their neck horizontal, but slightly lowered. When swimming, their head is slightly raised. Juveniles have different coloration than the adults, usually more dull colored with more white patches. Males and females are very similar but males are typically bigger than females. Adults have two different plumages, one during the breeding season and one during the winter. The winter coat, or commonly called the non-breeding plumage, is somewhat similar to the juvenile coat. Each species can be quite easily distinguished by their breeding plumage. Let's talk about them one by one. The five species can be divided into three groups. The red-throated, which is itself, the black-throated, which consists of itself and the Pacific loon, and the black-headed, which is the common loon and yellow-billed loon. The name itself is self-explanatory. Black-headed members have black head, black-throated members have dark throat, and red-throated members have red throat. Let's talk about them starting from the common loon. The common loon can be found throughout North America, but can also be found in the Atlantic coast of Europe during winter. On average, they are 81 cm long with wingspans of 136 cm. Adults in breeding plumage have blackish head, dark bill, and red eyes. The neck has a ring of white patches. Upper side is dark with white patches on their wings. Underside is white with some blackish streaks. The non-breeding plumage is mostly brown and white. The upper side is brown with some white spots on their wings and the underside is white. Their beak is also paler. Juveniles are similar to adults with non-breeding plumage but with duller color and rugged wings. The yellow-billed loon can be found throughout the whole Arctic. They are the largest loon species. Yellow-billed loon is very similar to the common loon, but instead of dark or pale bill, they have yellow bill, as their name say. They are also the only loon species that is not categorized as least concern. They are near threatened, which is caused by potential threats toward their habitat. 
The black-throated loon can mostly be found in Europe, but can also be found on the western tip of Alaska. During winter, they can be found towards the south. On average, they are 70 centimeters long. Their breeding plumage have grayish head with dark eyes and bill. Their throat is black, with white stripes on the sides and towards the bottom. Their upper side is mostly black, with white patches on the base of their nape and on their wings. Underside is mostly white. Their non-breeding plumage doesn't have the iconic black throat. Their throat is white instead. Juveniles are very similar to adults with non-breeding plumage, but smaller of course. The Pacific loon can mostly be found in Canada and Alaska, but also the eastern tip of Europe. During winter, they can be found throughout the west coast of North America, Japan, and Korea. They are like a smaller version of the black-throated loon. Their coloration is very similar to the black-throated loon, but their flank is black. Meanwhile, the black-throated loon have white flank. Last is the red-throated loon. They can be found throughout the northern region, but as always, towards the southern during winter. They are the smallest loon species, ranging around 53 to 69 centimeters long. Adults with breeding plumage have gray head and neck. They have dark red eyes and blackish bill. As their namesake, they have a red patch on their throat. The back of their neck has black and white stripes. Their upper side is darkish while the underside is white. Adults with non-breeding plumage have more white colors, including their neck. Now, let's talk about their behavior. But before that, Loons are very adapted to aquatic life. Their rear-located feet act like a propeller so they can swim relatively fast. They are also good divers, hence why they are called divers by the Europeans. This structure makes them a bad walker though. That's why they spend most of their time floating on the lakes. They are a good flyer, as they need to fly for a long distance when migrating towards the south approaching winter. But their stocky body makes it uneasy to take off. Like many cases in animals with similar build, they need to have a runway to lift off. But remember, they are bad at terrestrial locomotion. Good news is, they are really, really good at aquatic locomotion, so the water can act as their runway. Sounds ridiculous, doesn't it? But it's real. As I've shown in their distribution map earlier, they move south in winter. Some of them also stays in coastlines. Wonder why? Because the northern lakes are sometimes frozen during winter. Good news is, just like the seabirds, they have nasal salt glands so the drastic change of salinity is not really a big deal. They mostly eat fish, but can also eat other similarly sized animals like crustaceans, frogs, snails, etc. They search for prey by sight, so they can be observed looking around the lake, then finally dive to catch their prey. That's also why they are mostly found in clear lakes, because they wouldn't be able to see the fishes otherwise. Approaching summer, Adult loons will molt into their breeding plumage. Males are very territorial, so usually only a pair of loons can be found in an area. There can be multiple pairs in bigger lakes though. They will mate and nest on land, usually near the water. Both male and female will make the nest and incubate the eggs. Usually a pair of eggs are laid. It takes around 28 days before the eggs will hatch. When they are still very young, Hatchlings have brown feathers. Hatchlings are precocial and can immediately swim, but they still need to be fed by their parents. They will be able to take care of themselves after 3 months. Juveniles will molt into the adult plumage after around 6 months old. As I've pointed in the intro, the common loons are well known for their calls. They generally have 4 types of calls. Hood, Yodel, Tremolo, and Whale. Hood is a short exchange between individuals when they meet each other. Yodel is a warning call to drive other males away from their territory.
Tremolo is a distress call when they are alerted by the presence of some potential threats, but it's also used to communicate its presence when they are flying. Whale is their communicative call to maintain contact with each other between pair of individuals or adult and its chicks. But that's just the call of the common loon. Other species make different calls, and you can identify them based on their call if you are familiar with them. The yellow-billed loon's calls are similar to the yodel and tremolo of the common loon, but in different pitch. Pacific loons produce a short and sharp contact call. Croaking call. And a call similar to the common loon's yodel with higher pitch. Black-throated loons also croak. Yodel. and wail in a low pitch. Red-throated loons make these cawing calls. And these shrieking wails. And that's about it. Loon became somewhat of an icon. People around the world had heard their calls couple of times in movies. Yet most might not even know those are from Loon. Because they are so iconic, there are a lot of research projects on them. So we're probably gonna learn some more about them for the upcoming years. But for now, let's just learn what is known. And that's all for now. Oh, by the way, apparently the name Loon itself is taken from European language. Some say it's Old English, some say Swedish, but it's just kinda funny to me since Loon is the American name for them. Anyway, enjoy your day.